Welcome to the Big Metal Detecting Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Thursday night. It's 8 p.m. It's the Big Metal Detecting Podcast with myself, Dave Sadler from the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine. Tonight's guest will be Mr. Mark Thompson, and he'll be on in about 15 minutes. He's uh, he's running a bit late at home, so I'll be ringing him in in about 15 minutes. So until then, we're going to have a little bit of uh, news from this week. Well, not so much news. I've actually received the... Uh, my copy of the British Archaeology magazine, which come through this week, and uh, it's got quite a bit of metal detecting uh, information in there, which is uh, it's good. But uh, obviously, you know, we we like to keep our our eyes open in such things because uh, let's face it, uh, sometimes things see metal detecting community in a. A little bit of light different to what we we hope it would be seen in. But uh, quite a substantial amount of information in the magazine, the articles. Uh, The first one up. First of all, let me introduce you to uh, the podcast dashboard. If you are online or if you are on your telephone, tablet, etc., etc., for the show on Spreaker, you will see a cloud button somewhere near the title uh, and if you click on that, you'll be able to participate and ask questions of anybody, uh, myself or the guests inclusive. So uh, pop along to there and you'll be able to see what's what. Back to the British Archaeology magazine. Uh, the first article up is that of the Chew Valley Horde. Now those of you uh, obviously coming to uh, hearing information in the metal detecting community in the UK... We'll know all about this. This is a hoard that was found in Chew Valley by uh, detectorist Lisa Grace and Adam Staples uh, back in the summer. And it's uh, it's currently undergoing conservation. Sorry, it was January, not in the summer. We, we came to hear about it in the summer. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous hoard from the Bath and North East Somerset area. Uh, the finders initially reported discovery as potential treasure via the Portable Antiquity Scheme and continued to excavate the site. Uh, no sign of any container, what have you. And there were a number of individual clumps of coins which might have revealed something about the hoard's internal layout. Uh, so, yes, uh, I, I can't actually give you a figure regarding the hoard off the top of my head. But you're talking here in British Archaeology magazine a good six page article uh, looking at the the finds actually arriving at the British Museum conservators cleaning the coins and uh, what I quite liked about the article was the the mints that were represented in the Chew Valley Horde uh, as far north as York uh, the Wirral uh, Humber area, Hastings Chichester, Winchester, Bath, Bristol obviously a lot local to the Chew Valley and also uh, a number of different rulers were also covered by the um, the coins from uh, Harold Godwinson, uh, Harold II he was crowned the last Anglo-Saxon King of England in January 1066 uh, through to Edward the Confessor uh, and lots and lots of half cut coins as well um, half pennies, silver pennies that were uh, the only coins minted for general circulation were often cut into halves and quarters to provide smaller denominations. The, over to the next page, it goes on more images of coins and the area that it was found. Uh, silver pennies of Harold II, Alf Wine of Chichester, uh, the different makers' marks and such like. So, very, very, very interesting article <clears throat> and piece about the Chew Valley Hoard in this month's um, British Archaeology magazine. And it also gives out a, a, a nice little image uh, for a uh, treasure hunting magazine. So it's a bit of bit of a, uh, an advertisement and uh, kudos over to themselves who, if my memory serves me correctly, when the find was initially found, uh, the, the finders tried to get a hold of Alden and Sundry from the Portable Antiquities Scheme and went to Julian Evan Hart of Treasure Hunting Magazine for advice and he was able to uh, put them in communication with somebody 
who then obviously went down to site to continue the uh, the excavation process. Uh, <clears throat> second up, well, th there is another article actually, one about the many histories of the White Horse, and it uh, it does actually show a number of uh, coins uh, from 50 BC uh, with the with the horse similar to that of the Uffington horse and such like on. Uh, but anyway, moving on, the second article uh, that I mentioned is that of the Staffordshire Horde, and that being a Mercian royal treasure. Now, uh, it says here that after 10 years ago, uh, which the Staffordshire Horde was revealed to the world, the much anticipated definitive monograph was published uh, on November the 1st by Chris Fern, the project's academic lead, and outlined the study's key conclusion for British archaeology. And again, this goes into quite a lot of depth regarding the Anglo Saxon Horde that was found in Litchfield. And it, uh, it has a lot of images of individual pieces plus uh, pieces that obviously have been conserved and cleaned now. And again, looking at different um, different areas that the the parts may have come from. Uh, some absolutely beautiful imagery, as well as a lot of in the in the individual information about uh, pagan and Christianity. Uh, the Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Saxon designs, and it all, as I say, it comes together to for a, a fantastic uh, in-depth article about. Uh, and, and I know people may say, yes, we hear about the um, the hoard all the time, but at the end of the day, it's probably one of the biggest hoards known to ourselves in modern me metal detecting terms, and one of the most substantial historically. Uh, fi finally, in this month's Archaeology magazine is a, a again a big article uh, regarding tidal thames and it's something that i know a lot of listeners have uh, are interested in and a lot of people have participated in and that's the uh, mudlarking and this looks at different areas uh, that people l look at when mudlarking uh, it, it goes into a bit of more in depth about the book by natalie cohen and elliot rag called the river's tale archaeology uh, on the Thames foreshore in Greater London and it calls it the UK's greatest public archaeological site now obviously uh, that's a bit of a Mr Mona in the case that this isn't you have to have uh, actually licences to participate it is big enough for people to go on but obviously myself I couldn't go on just whimsically because at the end of the day there are laws around actually looking at mudlocking down in London uh, so that that's basically the brunt of Archaeology magazine this month. Uh, I thought I'd just chat about it to you, given it it's a lot about metal detecting in this one because obviously Mark's not able to come on straight away. Now, Mark, of course, Mark Thompson, uh, we will be discussing his ring that he found uh, three years ago, his medieval ring, a little bit more in depth and... Uh, You'll find out a lot more. Uh, you can listen to himself, the excitement. I I've been privy, obviously, knowing Mark quite well to everything and, and most steps of the, the process. But I'm going to let Mark discuss them with you all a little bit more. Now, uh, looking at the show lineup for the rest of the year so far, next week we have two gentlemen you probably wouldn't have heard of, uh, Ian Churchward and Ashley Mantle. Now, uh, this is actually... I'm very much looking forward to this show. Ian is actually a um, member of a band, and the band have written a song about metal detecting. Uh, and this is due to his friendship with metal detectorist Ashley Mantle. And he sent me this song a couple of weeks ago, and it is, it's quite a groovy little folk song. So uh, we've, we're delighted to announce that we have, we, we've been asked to actually launch this song for them uh, as part of their new album. Uh, the legendary 10 seconds the band's called so we're looking forward to uh, hearing that on air next week following that we have Pete Terrell uh, he'll be coming on on the 28th Black Friday more or less so uh, look for some deals with LP perhaps uh, the week following that we have three gentlemen from Hammered Time Metal Detecting and uh, another massive coup for the show on the 12th uh, Thursday the 12th of December we actually have the National Council for Metal Detecting and uh, 
they will be conducting a raffle draw through the entirety of their membership for 10 metal detectors which have been purchased by the National Council for Metal Detecting and they will be raffled out between all active members of the organisation so if you are a member of the uh, NCMD uh, you have a chance of winning one of these metal detectors which will be drawn live on air by uh, I'm not sure which member of the council so far but I'll be obviously hosting that and greatly looking forward to that on the 19th the show's a little bit open at the moment we have an idea of what we want to do uh, and on the 26th that will be a year in review which will be a pre-recorded show because it's Boxing Day uh, some people might not listen personally I'll be at a uh, Boxing Day party which we go to every year so uh, that'll be then so that's the year so far so what I'm going to do now I'm going to give uh, Mark a ring he uh, should be available now and we'll get him on air and we'll have a little chat about uh, about all things to do with his metal detecting find three years ago so uh, we're just ringing now I don't think you can hear the bing bong bing 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 bings of Skype and I hope he on Hiya Dave Good evening Mark, how are you? Yeah good mate, thanks, are you? Excellent uh, we're live on the Big Metal Detective podcast, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for coming on air tonight. Uh, yeah, not a problem. Obviously, it's uh, it's back in the news <laughs> because there's quite a a big thing going to be occurring in the next couple of weeks regarding your find of three years ago. So I'm going to get straight into it, ask you a couple of basic questions. How did you personally get into metal detecting? Well, uh <clears throat> I collected coins since I was a kid, um, and I, ju- I just thought, I thought it'd come out of the blue, really, uh, get myself a metal detector, and go and find myself some, really, you know, that's about it, so I did, and still at it now. <laughs> now, I uh, met you, uh, what, it must have been about four and a half years ago now, it was actually before you actually made the find. Uh, yeah. We met at some of the events that I organised for the, the Mayor of Rochdale, the uh, metal detecting events up there. And uh, you went through quite a spate of uh, golden finds. You had a, a little bit of a nickname at the time for the amount of golden finds that you were gleaned on the run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah three, um, what did I get now? Three, three gold in three weeks I got. I got <laughs> found the ring. And then um, found a full gold noble the week after. First haul, first signal. Um, this was with Find the Field the, uh, group with Kieran, Stores and Kirster. Um, and the week after that, I found a gold hat pin with a nice red stone. I don't know what that was like yet, but yeah, I had a good time. Did that that go through the the treasure process? The, the no, that no, no. Um, it, I think it, it was only it was Victorian right, flow. So I did we I, I took it to the flow. Um, it was Victorian, so we kept that. So uh, and then it comes obviously to uh, to three years ago the finder field dig over uh, now Now everywhere says it's Sherwood Forest to give it a bit of romance but it was actually in another area of Nottingham or another area close to in Nottingham yeah it was in Cur- Curtin in Newark the dig the actual dig mm-hmm. but they say they say like the farm the farm what I found on probably would have been Sherwood Forest like back in the day like yeah I'm with you, so obviously it could have been Sherwood Forest, so everyone's been utilising the term to uh, to look at history as opposed to uh, the current. Uh, obviously, yeah. Newark, Newark contract, being, it's been made famous in uh, the last year or so by the uh, River Hunters programme when they were actually digging, or sorry, swimming in the River Trent at Newark looking for uh, finds there. And one of our own listeners, Scotty B, he found uh, a Newark coin i can't remember the name of the coin scotty will remind me of the thing in newick newick siege penny it was actually oh yeah uh, which is quite a rare coin so on the day you've obviously gone down you you've gone on your paid dig you're happily metal detecting away beep 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 what happened 
Well, we set off. I was with Ant, you know, Ant Doyle. Um, yeah. We set off on our own little way. I headed up this big, big hill on a ploughed field. Quite a big, steep hill. So I just carried on up the hill. I got to the top. I was only detecting about 20 minutes. Um, I got the signal. Flipped the clod over, and there it was, just just in the stone and a bit of the gold cusp sparkling at me. Thought, Thanks lovely. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got on the phone to Ant, get over there and look at this. I couldn't believe, couldn't believe it. What we're looking at, to be honest. And, and obviously, Ant's reaction was much, was more or less the same as your own. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah. Plus, you probably got a punch for it being there. What one of the what are the others that you uh, found in that little spray? And what <laughs> machine were you actually using at that point when you found the ring? Um, Setmetics Eurotrek Pro. Uh huh. Yeah. And and being a gold ring, obviously, we hear that silver sings. What was the the gold tone like on there? Did it was it a nice firm tone that you got that with? It's a good, it, it's a good signal. Um, we call it the duck tone, me on the Eurotech. It come in at about in the fifty range uh-huh. on the screen. Yeah. And up it came. You had a look it, when yeah. you got it out the ground, and what was the initial reaction at that point? I didn't know what to do. Really, we, we had, well, we just, we just buzzing with me and Ant, like <laughs> so. We, had, we just had a scout about that area. For a, yeah. for a bit, but nothing else come up, so we just carried on on our way. Um, that's all I found all day, to be honest. And you re- did you realise straight away that it was significant? <clears throat> we knew it was special, but not quite this special. Mm-hmm. No. Then, you know, obviously, the process thereafter. You've you've you've, you've shown Kieran, you've shown Kirsty, everyone else has had a look. Can you actually, for, for those who are listening, who haven't seen the ring, the article is uh, on our website, which I will put on uh, put onto the chat room now. So anybody who hasn't seen the article in depth <coughs> can go along and uh, have a look at that. But um, yeah. can you describe the ring in in as much as you can? Well, to, to gold. Got gold band, no, no, uh, no oil marks on the insides. Uh, on, on the sh- one shoulder, it's got the Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. On the other shoulder, it's got the Infant Christ, and obviously the, the large sapphire with the claws holding it. So, how has how has that actually been determined as um, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary? That's obviously a, a quite a peculiar one in itself. Yeah, well, that's what we thought. That's what the museum came back with when like, they had it for three years. <laughs> there's, there's carvings on some wood, wooden things. I think it's down Devon in right. some Trinity Church. And it's got the St. Elizabeth of Hungary on. So, ah, the, the, so yeah. So, the, the ring, obviously, it's it's gone away. You've you've contacted the Fines Liaison Officer. They've took it off you to put it onto the... Um, onto the Portable Antiquity Scheme database, which, again, links are on the article. And it took quite some time to go back because it's it's gone to the, the coroner, I take it, and the coroner, there, the coroner therefore, uh, classed it as treasure. Yeah. And then from there, it's gone to the British Museum where they've done the historical... Oh, oh, it went to the museum first. Right, sorry. Uh, they had it for around about... Just over three years, and then I got, then I got a letter from the coroner, and we went down to Nottingham, and they declared it as treasure. That was in about Christmas time last year. Right. Yeah, this, I rem- yeah. remember that. You actually kept me fully abreast of that, obviously. Yeah. And then That's at six- the point where we are, they've you've, you've got the. I take it before it's gone to the coroner. Then you've you've received the information uh, regarding the research that's been done and the, the findings on the ring yeah yeah received all the paperwork and stuff so basically I'm, I'm looking on the information that you've sent me uh, the sapphire is held by eight claws 
into an octafoil collet, which echoes the ta- traciered windows of Gothic cathedrals. This cup design is illustrated by Gerard David in his portrait of a goldsmith, dated 1505. So, uh, obviously, they, they've, they've looked in depth at it. Uh, it says, obviously, added to the properties of the ring are the infant Christ and St. Elizabeth Hungary, as you said, engraved on the shoulders. I belong to the type of English devotional ring named iconographic, uh, although unusually. So, <clears throat> there's also an image that you sent me of a... Um, from an oil painting with, with similar rings on the oil painting. Is that what I've mentioned previously about the... Uh, yeah, that's what David. you. Yeah, that's, that's him. That's the goldsmith, right? I'm with you there. So obviously, that, that's come from Christie's. That they've done that research, right? Got you. Because the rings on there, obviously, this is halfway down the article itself. Um, yeah, the rings look more or less perfectly the same as as the ring that you've you found, obviously. And yeah. uh, from there, it's as you said, it's gone on to Christie's. Yeah. And uh, that will be taking place on Wednesday, the 27th of November. So uh, two weeks yesterday and that that sale takes place again. We've added the links for people who want to go onto the Christie's website. Would you be willing to give us an idea of the estimates that Christie's are um, suggesting currently? Yeah, no problem. Um, We've put it on. The estimate is... 25 to 35k wow <laughs> but there's a lot of people but, suggesting that will be significantly higher perhaps well the, when, when it went through the treasure process um, the treasure val- the treasure valuation committee valued it uh, their independent valuation come back at 40 to 50k wow. and we got off they offered us 45k um, which we accepted, and then they come back with they're not in a position to acquire it, so we got this claimed and we received it back. Right, I've not been through the treasure process, uh, obviously, and especially not to to that point. So that's where I'm interested. What actually happens if they can't afford to to buy the ring for that? So they couldn't afford the forty five thousand pound, and it's come back to you. It'll go to Christie's, it'll sell for X amount, Christie's will take a percentage, and then the rest of the um, monies will be obviously split between yourself and the landowner. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So are we are we looking at a bit of a holiday then? <laughs> well, we're hoping so, Dave. <laughs> now, yeah. do, you, do you know, what I wanted to do at this point now, there's actually, um, I couldn't download it, I couldn't get the audio of a um, a radio show that you rang up from not too long ago. <laughs> oh, when I got pranked, you mean? When you got pranked. <laughs> hey. Tell us yeah. about the prank, because that was absolutely brilliant, and kudos to, to Mrs. Mark for that as well. Oh, man. Well, I was at work, me, and my phone rang off this private number, so we answered it. And what was his name? Come at me with, it's a Mr. Godchild. Um his ancestors owned Sherwood Forest and all this carry on and basically he wants his ring back I shouldn't be selling his family heirlooms at auction (laughs) 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 it done me head in didn't know what was going on like you know what I mean yeah you you swore once or twice yeah they blanked it out though yeah (laughs) (laughs) and eventually yes you had over there big time Eventually, they come clean and said that she'd set you up, and uh, obviously, you didn't buy the takeaway that night. <laughs> yeah. In fact, she probably threatened that she wasn't getting the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you're obviously still metal detecting as well, Mark. Yeah, I've not not been for a while. Like right? so we've just had a bit. Ba- I've got a little baby. So he's not, he's not so- watching Peppa Pig at the moment. He's downstairs with his brother, so yeah, he's watching Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, are you still using the the same machine? No, I, uh, I use the T2 now. T2 right. SE. 
and have we found much with that obviously not as consequential but I found quite a few things uh, I actually what did I find I found the gold side pin with that and actually with the yeah uh, yeah and all the other stuff sil- silver coins hammered coins you know found quite a bit with it but nothing as good as the ring do you still go on organised digs or is it is it just your own personal permissions and uh, friends and what have you now no, still, still go when I get the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still field go down to field again. Yeah, plenty of times. Yeah, since. I, I, I can't speak highly enough of uh, find the field, Kieran and Kirst. We actually had them on the All Metal Mode UK podcast uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, you, we learned a lot about them. And as I said, uh, you can't speak. I can't speak highly enough. I keep promising to go down. I've still got a bundle of. Um, of the printed copies of the magazine that we had printed in um, for Detectable Land, the Rodney Cook Memorial, I'll keep promising to take down. But as you know, with the new baby, it's it's finding a time to actually get out and doing things now. That's it, Dave. Yeah, but yeah, I must agree that they are they're a great group to dig with. Uh, great people, friendly. Can't fault them myself. I'll be there. I'll be with them again in future soon. Well, we'll no doubt meet up on one of them digs because, as I say, I keep promising you. There's been, um, I, I suppose, been going out with a group. Uh, I think it's three times. Unfortunately, it's had to be cancelled. Uh, this particular exciting site because it's it's completely waterlogged, and it's completely understandable the amount of bad weather that we're having at the moment. And I'm sure find the field to be um, feeling it a little bit because a lot of the areas within. Uh, Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire and such like is 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 flooded to death at the moment, uh, especially around Matlock yeah. Packer one of you. So I'm sure they're feeling it as well. It's a peculiar time of the year for metal detecting at the moment. Yeah, it's hard work, isn't it? Uh, it yeah. is. It is. <laughs> so uh, as I say, the 27th, the the ring will be on auction. Now, as I've spoken, yeah, it's my birthday, birthday as well. Then oh, 27th birthday. Birthday. Yeah, birthday present that'll be. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, myself and Luke, uh, what we're going to try to be doing that day is, you said the the the, the blah, blah, blah. auction starts at around 10am, so you're hoping, are you going down to Christie's for the auction by the way? I don't think I am, no, I was going to but I don't think I've got time really, be so I'm that. hoping just, just going to watch it online. Yeah, that'll be the actual height of uh, excitement that, no doubt. Uh, yeah. So online, you're looking at potentially um, coming on about half past ten, quarter to eleven, maybe. So yeah, well, it's ten, um, and the ring's lot thirty six. Right. So it'll be between half ten and eleven, I'd imagine. Right. So what we're going to try and do, if we can, we done it <coughs> once in the past with the Roman ingot that was discovered a couple of years ago. What we're going to yeah. try and do is uh, put a live feed, if we can, on Facebook. If we can't put it on Facebook, we'll put it on the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine website and then put the yeah. links through Facebook for people, obviously, to follow that. But we will have a um, some information going out about what, what's happened with the ring uh, on the 27th, and we'll actually be able to speak about that on the 28th before Pete Terrell comes on the show. So greatly looking forward to that. And... Uh, you know, with all due respect, Mark, you've you've always been helpful to me, and you've always um, supported myself. And I can't wish you enough luck with with getting as much as is humanly possible. And uh, you know, potentially, if not life changing figures, it's certainly in the short term a, a change for the life, no doubt. Oh yeah, nice one. Cheers for that day. Thanks. No problem whatsoever. So, uh, anything else you want to throw in there? Um, no, not really. Not really, Dave, no. When you out and about next, any ideas? Oh, I'm not going to clean once this weather books up. I've been dying <laughs> to get out. I've been dying to get out, but this weather, and it's not for me, mate. <laughs> not anymore. To be honest, I don't think few, it's for many of us. A few years ago, I would have been out in it. I was out in the snow and all sorts, but no, not anymore, mate. It's getting more and more difficult, isn't it? I mean, some of the uh, the weather that I've 
as on the way home from work today I mean coming to and from floods it's been diabolical but uh, going through leak and what have you the snow coming home mixed in with the rain it was uh, torrential horrendous and, oh, we've got uh, snow up there oh yeah 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 absolutely yeah. and looking at the uh, looking at all the other weather locally it's uh, it's not looking the kindest and the suggesting that we're going to be looking at very much snow this coming weekend and getting a lot colder so I've actually got the big coat out for tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> right so i i will let you go obviously uh baby to look after uh and uh, yeah. obviously can't thank you enough for coming on tonight and talking to everybody about um about the find let me just check if anybody's got any other questions in there before i go <laughs> steve no Petkin says that it's uh it's got to be like the only fool, fools and horses scene with the uh the watch <laughs> <laughs> Passing out. <laughs> Rob, Rob Random says it will go for a lot more than 45. He, he's guessing at around 150. If it goes for 150k, right, you owe me a Big Mac. All right. A Big Mac? A Big Mac. That's all I want. <laughs> I'll get you a fat steak, Dave. A fat steak will do even better. That's the one, mate. Well, you take care, Mark. Uh, good luck yeah. for the auction in two weeks. Obviously, we'll communicate before and after. Um, and try as 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 well as we will to get that streaming if we can, if possible. If not, we'll keep up everybody up to date with everything that or what have you. And if anybody is interested, uh, please pop onto the Christie's website uh, and have a look for the uh, rare jewellery sale. I think it's something like the, that that's on there, and you'll see lot thirty six be in this particular ring. If not, I have listed the um, article throughout social media especially on the archaeology archaeology and metal detecting magazine facebook page and it's also on the all metal mode uk and the big metal detecting podcast page as well but it's also in the uh, group chat for tonight mark thank you very much for coming on and we look forward no to finding out as much as we can in the future you take care my friend all right cheers dave for that brilliant take care mark good night take care mate bye bye so that was that was Mark Thompson. Uh, I don't know if you if everybody if you hear all the um, the speak the speaker the Skype noises in the background, uh, beepings and bobbings and such like. So uh, well, you've got me for another half an hour. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to jump over to a bit of Egyptology for a bit uh, shortly. Uh, you know, if anybody in the in the chat room does have any in conversation, any any information or whatever. Give me a shout and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about whatever. But we're going to jump over because there's been a, a multitude of uh, Egypt-related archaeological reports emanating from the country recently. Now, I don't know if this is uh, anything to do with the easing off of the, um, obviously, tourists and what have you. They're trying to attract the tourists back. But there's been a, a multitude of things being reported that coming out of the country. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit gutted, uh, Mrs. Sadler. I was supposed to be going metal detecting on uh, Sunday. Unfortunately, as I've just mentioned, that's the uh, the rally's been cancelled. Lucky for me in a way because Mrs. Sadler's uh, best friend phoned her the other night and said, uh, "Would you like to come to London on Sunday? What for?" She says uh, to the Tutankhamun exhibition, uh, and I was completely and utterly gutted. Um, I've been to Egypt, I've been to Tutankhamun's tomb, uh, but obviously this tour in London at the Saatchi Gallery at the moment, it's there from uh, the start of this month until early May 2020, and the uh, the exhibition there, it's uh, celebrating, <coughs> excuse me, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the discovery of the Tutankhamun's tomb, and it's, uh, it's a final chance to see a lot of the World Heritage Architecture architects before artifact artifacts before they return to Egypt forever so there's 150 authentic pieces from the tomb that are going to be uh, exhibited there so you can understand how peed off I was that Mrs Sadler's going to see them and I'm not uh, so obviously that, that that's the, the start of our little Tutankhamun and Egypt chat so one of the articles uh, that was released was that of a Roman era catacomb that was unearthed in Egypt 
<clears throat> and this was uh, an Egyptian and Japanese joint archaeological mission unearthed a catacomb engraved in a stone in Giza, uh, they said last Tuesday. The catacomb, which dates back to the 1st and 2nd century of the Roman era, was found in Saqqara area to the south of the capital Cairo. Uh, Saqqara archaeological site, uh, I went on a visit, uh, oh, it must have been about 11 years ago now, to Egypt. In fact, it was me honeymoon, so it would have been 12 years ago, so don't actually say that I forgot. In fact, it was 12 and a half years ago, maybe 13. Let's not talk about that. <coughs> uh, anyway, the um, we, we went to, to Cairo. We stayed in a hotel, which uh, I've, it, it was one of the most amazing moments of my life to open up the curtains at night uh, and see directly in front of me all lit up uh, the pyramids of Giza I was completely and utterly flabbergasted and I got so excited until I got there and I was completely and utterly let down because I, people wouldn't stop bothering me uh, and people don't realise in all the shots they see of Egypt uh, looking if you're looking from the Sphinx's eyes all you see are KFCs rubbish all over the place and uh, I was just so despondent actually after actually visiting the the pyramids, but then on the tour we went over to Saqqara and it was it was su superb the the location itself the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, uh, wonderful place and they keep finding more and more there. And the, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen actually took place while I was there. The the guide asked us to look up into the air, and you're talking like you know up cloud level. All the thermals there carrying things along and all you could see for miles and miles were black bin bags and rubbish uh, which people are just throwing out the windows, landfills etc and the heat's actually picking them up and the thermals are carrying them along and it was one of the most peculiar and odd things I've ever ever seen. Um, really really weird, obviously it, it happens all the time in Egypt. I digress back to the catacomb. Uh, the tomb has a mud brick building with a ladder and a room engraved in limestone. This is the first Roman tomb to be discovered in the Saqqara area. Five statues of Isis were found in the tomb, alongside with some clay utensils near the front gate of the catacomb. In the catacomb, a room measuring 15 metres high and 2 metres wide was also unearthed. As I say, so much coming out of Egypt at the moment. Uh, Scotty is a fantastic place. Um, forget about what everybody's saying about the tourism trade at the moment and go, I, I've got a good friend who's actually she's just took a very prominent part in a uh, very well, one of Britain's best known uh, Egyptology organisations and I'm hoping to get her on the show in the coming weeks, um, she's actually told them that she will do radio interviews and such like so I went yes you will, you can come and do one for ourselves Uh Secondly, in this wee tour of Egypt, Egypt experts set sights on finding the lost pharaoh's remains in the Great Pyramid. Now, you can't talk about the Great Pyramid. In fact, you can't talk about Egyptology uh, without thinking of Dr. Zahi Hawass, who is on every single Egyptology, Egyptian program that you've ever seen, no doubt. And he claims that uh, Khufu, who the, um, the, pyramid, the Great Pyramid was allegedly built for uh, still is somewhere within there even though they've uncovered sarcophagi and such like but he reckons there's within this huge void that was discovered by uh, a French team a couple of years ago he thinks that this uh, the remnants of Khufu still exist Khufu was an ancient pharaoh of the 4th dynasty who ruled from 2589 BC to 2566 and was the mastermind behind the Great Pyramid. Uh, he leaving it was actually his head on the Sphinx outside of the Great Pyramid as a reminder to warn off robbers. Until recently, many Egyptologists had believed his plan had failed due to the discovery of an empty sarcophagus that I mentioned previously, uh, believed to contain his body. However, that all changed in 2017 when a group of French archaeologists discovered the void near the Queen's Chamber during the Scan Pyramid project. So Zoc Dr. Zawi Hawass uh, claims that there's actually a lot more in there than than 
we know of currently we know this great void exists uh, we know of all the the shafts that exist in there the other small voids there's a lot more going on in the pyramid than we currently know of uh, which is probably a definite obviously I'm not an expert on Egyptology but looking at what other experts say it suggested that there's a lot more going on there than we would currently believe and lastly in the the recent articles from Egypt uh, experts have cracked the mystery of ancient Egypt's sacred bird mummies DNA analysis have helped work out the origin of nearly six million mummified ibises ibises being a bird uh, from Egypt or in Egypt during them times uh, an ancient Egypt mystery has been solved according to researchers who say they've cracked the conundrum of where millions of mummified birds came from pharaohs and members of the nobility were often mummified but the practice was never reserved for humans cats, crocodiles, mice and mongooses are among the mummified animals that have been found <coughs> excuse me uh, while some have been discovered alongside human burials, others, most notably the sacred ibis bird, were mummified as part of rituals designed to curry favour with the dogs. More than 4 million sacred ibis mummies have been found in the catacombs of Tuna el Gibel, and 1.75 million have been discovered in the ancient burial ground of Saqqara. That's a lot of birds. <laughs> a lot of birds. Uh, the vast majority were votive offerings to the god Thoth, a practice that had its heyday between 450 BC and 250 BC. So, uh, as I say, there's a lot going on with in Egypt currently. <clears throat> uh, fantastic place, it, it really is. It's, uh, it's a place that, if you haven't been, go. It really is a great place. So uh, I'm popping into the, the chat room. Uh, I'll have a quick look through there, see if anybody's got any questions. Uh, hi, Lee Hull, Scotty B, uh, Steve Pettican, and Rob Randall, who are currently in the, the chat room. Hello to all of you, Lee, just to let you know, uh, and obviously let other listeners know. The Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine Facebook page took a bit of a hit this last week when we published a post and the post was shared multiple times because of its uh, its content and the uh, the image was actually that of a ring and the way the ring was uh, photographed was in a black background and it, it gave the impression that it was the ring from the Lord of the Rings the article was actually a BBC article and discussed the treasures currently going through the process in, in Wales uh, including this particular ring and for some reason, that has been reported. Oh, sorry. Good. Hi, Mike, as well. Apologies, Mike. Um, that has been reported to be fake news. And obviously, these posts that people have been sharing from the Facebook group, uh, sorry, Facebook page, uh, have been called fake news. Uh, this is a BBC article, and we got banned from posting for a week. We got round it. Uh, we were able to post, but obviously the byproduct of us not being able to post and this ban meant that readers couldn't actually see any of the posts that were there so for people who haven't been able to see Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine posts in the past week that's because of a Facebook ban over a BBC News article regarding Welsh treasures uh, that came back yesterday that information's uh, to, to Lee Hull uh, Lee Hull who's in the chat room you, you may have seen his photographs uh, Lee is a uh, amateur can we call you or semi-professional or uh, hobbyist photographer and Lee as well as taking photographs of, of people he takes a lot of photographs of historical locations and what I asked Lee to do a while ago and it's been a, a fantastic for the for the page itself a lot of interest was could he actually put that that in them photographs onto the, uh, the the site itself the Facebook page which he did and um, he then started to add a link to Wikipedia and such like to give a little bit more information about what people were seeing and it's uh, it's been brilliant so thank you very much to Lee for that and as I say Facebook is completely and utterly back up and running again now uh, amateur he says <laughs> even though I talked him into doing a wedding not long ago or he asked my opinion I said do it um, so yeah completely back up and running 
Uh, Mr. Tim Levine, give a shout out to him also. Tim Levine, he every morning uh, before, now I get up for work early and Tim's retired and Tim's always up before me because the um, news of the day is always on before I'm up. So kudos to him as well. And also Tombo Brew, who's not his real name, but he got fed up with people on Facebook, so he uses a pseudonym. He's one of our posters as well that posts uh, other information, other articles, um, links and such like, as well as myself and Luke. So thank you to all of them. Fully up and running, back where we belong. And one of the other things I've been able to do this past week, uh, because I've not been able to work on the Facebook page as much as I'd like to, uh, I've been able to glean a lot of information and uh, put articles to, put a lot of new articles together. I've been able to glean a lot of my old articles uh, from another magazine I used to write for uh, some time ago. And also other articles that I was given permission to utilise in the past. So I've currently got about 44, 45, maybe even closer to 50 now, new and fresh articles that will be uh, up. up uploaded in the coming months onto the archaeology and metal detecting magazine website and thereafter onto instagram facebook and twitter uh so that's all running fantastically uh we we do have a another piece of news but unfortunately we can't go ahead and give any details on that currently um and, and as i say within the next couple of weeks we do have for me you know we, we've been asked by the national council of metal detecting would we uh, would we consider hosting a show for them to be able to do this draw for the members? For those of you who weren't listening earlier, the National Council for Metal Detecting have put together a uh, Christmas raffle for all uh, active members. Uh, Ten metal detecting machines have been bought or are being bought or, or are being sourced. And on the 12th of December, a, a complete raffle for the entirety of the members database will be drawn from and the winners announced on the show live on the 12th of December so uh, that's a big show for us because obviously we, we hope to have a lot of new listeners coming over who won't have listened to the the, the show before who won't know of the show and um, obviously we'll try and do our utmost best to keep them interested apologies tonight that Mark um, was a short interview we, we did plan to have Blackadder on the, tonight as our guest, but unfortunately they they had a, a, another compressing commitment that had to uh, take precedence. So Mark come on more or less last minute. Uh, he has got a baby there, his wife's at work, so he's come on to do a, a short piece, uh, obviously to discuss the ring, um, the finding of the ring, etc., etc. So uh, thank you very much for Mark to do that tonight. Um, as I say, other other information next week. We it's a bit of a coup for ourselves again. Mike Foose on his birthday is on the twelfth. Maybe he'll win. Maybe I'll win, Mike, and I have to change my name so it doesn't sound as if it's a, a bit a bit of an a uh, bit of a cheating method going on. Uh, I'm just scrolling through my uh, emails just so I can give you this bit of information. Next week's show, uh, Ian Church. Ward and Ashley Mantle. Now, uh, I've been in communication with Ian for a couple of weeks. He's from a band called The Legendary Ten Seconds. Now, um, they both sorted out Skype and what have you. They haven't got Skype, but I know they met via a historical society. They've both got a deep interest in history. And um, Ashley, being a metal detectorist, um, <coughs> excuse me, his friend decided, hey, we'd like to write a song about metal detecting. So they did. And uh, next week we're going to play the song. And it is a fantastic little ditty uh, in, from, from the world of folk music by the legendary 10 Seconds. Really looking forward to learning a little bit more about their relationship, how they met. Uh, learn a little bit more about the legendary 10 Seconds because I know they've done other songs. One about a golden angel coin and the boar badge and uh, that were found in metal detecting in Bosworth uh, plus there's there's another one he sent me the other day uh, which Yahoo on your phone has gone absolutely rubbish so you can't find the information when you want it but believe me the song that I'm actually hoping well the song we will be playing next week from the legendary 10 seconds will be well worthwhile um, more or less everybody 
uh, that's the show for tonight uh, I can briefly actually I'll briefly run through some of the news articles that are popped up on our timeline tonight so you all know uh, what's there for those of you who don't know there's two archaeology and metal detecting magazine areas the first is the page which has multiple uh, news articles from around the world archaeology metal detecting history videos images etc etc they come on throughout the day and every day especially now that we're back in business uh, the last article that was actually put up on there tonight uh, beautiful little article treasure hunters salvage liquor from a 102 year old world war ii ship shipwreck but haven't tasted a drop uh, this is a german u-boat uh, sunk during world war one and they've had a, a multitude of cognac benedictine liquor uh, and, and other similar things that they've brought up from there so uh, that was the last article <coughs> that appeared on there tonight also we share a lot of the information that the uh, treasure hunting magazine put out as well because we've got nothing for respect but respect for the treasure hunting magazine and the work they do and obviously we 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 try to promote them as much as we can <coughs> other information appear on there tonight routers have actually got some new kits out for people who are uh, routers fans they've got new hoodies out new hats new t-shirts uh oh yeah yeah there is one derbyshire constabulary have actually shared the photograph uh, they would like to speak to the male in this image now please go on to the archaeology and Mat detecting magazine on facebook and scroll down it's not a very good photograph, uh, but the gent's clothing in it is distinctive and he's carrying a small spade and metal detector. He was seen with a free female in and around the Castleton, Bamford and Brough area on the 6th of November. And people would like to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, what's actually gone on there. So that's, uh, as I say, go on to the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine Facebook page and you'll be able to scroll down and find that. There's also uh, a, a link to all the finds that have been found in the Dig Ventures archaeological dig this summer at Lindisfarne as well. So uh, that that really is interesting as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will we'll give up the ghost for the night. Uh, thank you all for coming on board and listening. It's been great to speak. Sorry for boring you with my voice and the information about Egypt. It's just something that does have my... Um, full attention I, I, I love egyptology right up there with the, the medieval times for myself so uh, as i say please go on to our website find out a little bit more about the medieval ring it's sale uh, on the 27th of november in the meantime we'll give out that information as much as we can via our normal sources also shared obviously to the uh, all metal mode uk and big metal detecting podcast facebook page i'm dev sadler it's been a pleasure. Good night. The Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information, offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. The magazine is run by the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community for the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com That's archmdmag.com And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcast, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat and Archeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line. <laughs>